Hi, this is episode 42 of Krondos. I'm your host, Jordan Hudgens. I'm a Ruby dev and the CTO of the DevCamp platform. On Tuesdays, I like to cover topics that'll help you perform well in a coding job interview. And today, I'm gonna to discuss the best ways to answer binary search interview questions. If your college computer science algorithm and data structure knowledge is a little bit rusty, let's start with a high-level view of what binary search is. Imagine that we lived in a world that still used printed dictionaries. What would the algorithm look like to find the word motorcycle? We could go with the naive approach and start at the beginning of the dictionary and look at each word until we get to motorcycle. However, that would force us to traverse thousands of words for no reason whatsoever. That's not the way that we'd look up a word in the dictionary, so that's probably a good indicator that there's a better option in the computer science world as well. How would you find motorcycle in the dictionary? You'd open the dictionary up in the middle. If you landed on a page where the letters begin with O, you'd know to flip to the left. If you run into the L's, you know you need to move slightly to the right. You'll continue this process until you find the word motorcycle. So binary search is faster than simply going word by word, but how much faster is it exactly? And write this down, because it could be asked by the interviewer. Binary search runs in big O of log n time complexity. This is very fast. In fact, even if you use binary search on a dictionary with millions of hypothetical words, you'd be able to find the target word in around 20 page turns. This would be compared with the naive approach that would take tens of thousands of page turns. So now that you have a good idea on how binary search works at a high level, let's walk through a technical example. Imagine you had an array of values such as this. How would we find the value 19? Keeping our dictionary example in our mind, we're gonna utilize the same principle to quickly find the 19 with binary search. Here you can see what a binary tree looks like. There are a few rules that binary trees need to follow in order for us to search through them. The tree has to be sorted, if it's not sorted, you need to run a sorting algorithm such as quicksort as a subroutine prior to running binary search. Each node has the ability to have at most two child nodes. The child node on the left has to be less than the parent node. The child node on the right has to be greater than or equal to the parent node. As you can see, this tree obeys each of these rules, which means that we can utilize binary search to find the 19 value. The process goes as follows. We start at the root node. In this case, it's 10. And since the target value is greater than 10, we can immediately ignore the left side of the tree, cutting our collection by over 50% right away. Looking at the value 20, we know that 19 is less than 20, so we move to the left. Lastly, we see we've arrived at the target value and our search is over. That only took three comparisons to get to the 19 value, which is much faster than if we had simply started at the beginning of the array and iterated through it until the target was found. Obviously, with a small array like this, it'd be easy to iterate through and get the 19th value. However, this is a base case. Binary search makes it possible to search through millions of values in a very efficient manner. In summary, some keys to remember in order to properly answer the binary search interview questions are, binary trees are a data structure. They need to be sorted in order to be valid. Each node can have up to two child nodes. To search through the tree, you recursively traverse the tree and move left for lower values and right for greater than or equal to values. Binary search runs in big O of log n time complexity. I hope that this has been helpful and will help you answer any binary search interview questions that arise in a coding interview. In the show notes, I've also included a link to the animation that I use in the video so you can play with the algorithm yourself.